This is the fifth in our series of lectures on section 2.2. And in this lecture, we're going to prove uh, the following theorem, which is a certain distributive law of set theory. It tells you how you distribute a union over an intersection. So it says for all sets A, B, and C, A union B intersected with C is equal to A union B intersected with A union C. So it says that you should take the union of A with each of B and C separately, and you should intersect the results. And that's equivalent to the original union. It's probably a good idea for you to draw a three-set Venn diagram and to first draw the one on the left and then draw the one on the right just to convince yourself that this thing has to be true. Um, I won't do that uh, in this lecture, but that's something that you should check. Um, so in order to write the proof of this, you have to do two things because it's a set equality. So you have to prove that this set is a subset of this set. And then in another paragraph, you have to prove the converse, that this set is a subset of this set. And in order to do that, to, to, to do each of those, you have to make use of the working definitions of union and intersection. So there isn't much more for me to say about it other than to ask you to put your video on pause and go ahead and try to do that. So see if you can uh, write up a proof of this, and when you come back, you can compare your answer to mine. So here's my proof. I wasn't able to fit it all on the same slide, so you'll. this is the proof of the first half. This is the proof of um, this half here, and we'll do the, other, the proof of the other half on the next page. So I warn the reader that I'm first going to prove this inclusion here. So how does one prove that something is a subset of something else? You have to take a generic element of this set and you have to prove that it lies in this set. Okay, so I begin by saying let X be an element of this left-hand set. And now I have to use the definition of this union here. So by definition that means that Either X is in A, or X is in B intersected with C. So I have to consider those as two cases, and I have to argue, um, in each case separately, that X would have to wind up in the right-hand side. So if it's the first case that X is an element of A, then X is certainly an element of A union B, and it's also an element of A union C. So that's an AND and therefore x is in the intersection of two, those two sets. And so that proves, that takes care of the case where x is in A. If, on the other hand, x is in B intersected with C, see, that was the other case, well, then that means that, because of the definition of intersection, that means that x is in B and x is in C. So that means, since x is in B, then x must be in A union B, because it's in B. Remember, union means or. And x must be in A union C, because x is in C. So we've got it in both of these sets, and therefore it must be in their intersection. And so I've proven, in either case, that x winds up in this set. And so that completes the proof that this set is a subset of this set. And I put that in a display and labeled it as um, number one, because we'll refer to it later. Now we have to turn to the other half of the proof. We have to prove that this is a subset of this. So remember, we're trying to prove next that this thing is a subset of this thing. And so I should begin by um, giving myself an x in here and proving that it's in here. So I say, suppose, conversely, that x is an element of that right-hand set. Now, what does it mean to say that? It's an and statement. So that means x is in here and x is in here. Now, if x happens to be in A, well, then that automatically puts it in here. 
because this is a union. Okay, so that takes care of the case where x is an element of a. On the other hand, if x is not an element of a, then since it's in this union, it must be in b. And since it's in this union here, it must be in c. And therefore, it must be in b intersected with c. And so we've shown that in any case, x is either in a or in b intersected with c, and therefore it's in the union of those two sets. Okay, so that completes the proof that this set here is a subset of this set. Now, if you compare 1 with 2, 1 gives you the reverse inclusion, 2 gives you this inclusion, and so it follows that the two sets are equal, completing the proof. Okay, so that's sort of a typical way of proving the equality of sets, and there are numerous other examples of such things in the um, exercises at the end of section 2.2 for you to practice on. And so that's, that's something that you should do.